Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Andrea Leon Grossman. I'm the Climate Action Director for Azul, an environmental justice organization. Um, I agree with uh, many of the, of the previous speakers that uh, desalination must be included as part of the critical, critical water infrastructure policy. With a changing and warmer climate, we're, we must consider the implications for projects that will be built on our coast. Desalination plants are vulnerable to sea level rise, tsunamis, and earthquakes, among others. Building a plant that is not critical infrastructure may save time and money for the developer, but it could leave communities without the essential resource of water when a natural disaster strikes and the ongoing climate crisis unfolds. Given the tremendously high cost of development and operation for these plants, the inherent risk to ocean environments, marine life and neighbor, neighboring communities, desalination should also be considered a last resort when sourcing water, not a top priority. Given the Coastal Commission's extensive environmental justice policy, it's even more important for desalination to be considered critical infrastructure as vulnerable communities are the first ones to feel the impact when industrializing the coast. If something is really needed, it means it's critical for residents to have and ensure it's operating despite natural disasters or climate change. The entities that provide the critical public service of water must be considered extreme, must be considered critical infrastructure so that building standards will be prepared for the ine inevitable challenges of extreme weather and climate change. Uh, according to the last IPCC report, desalination is basically maladaptation and it contributes more to climate change. So that should also be uh, taken into account. The public will need to rely on any desal plant to provide water like clockwork, no weather, not weather or natural events should get in the way of the desal plant performing its critical service. The only way to ensure that that is to categorize plants truthfully and transparently is what they are, critical infrastructure. The other factors like red tides, like al algae blooms, which also shut down the Cosbat desal plant for weeks, limited the local water supplies, oil spills, which OC recently suffered in Huntington Beach in an incident that foreshadows the risk for the proposed desal plant there and climate change, which guarantees that much of the coastal property will be at risk of erosion and loss in the coming, in the coming decades. Factors like these must also be taken into consideration throughout the development of the desal plant. And the only way to ensure those factors are included is to categorize desalination plants as critical infrastructure, which is what they are. Thank you so much, I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Our next speakers are Scott Badenoch, followed by Charming Evelyn, followed by Connor Everts. So Scott Badenoch, it is now your turn to speak. You may unmute yourself and begin. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I'm Scott Wilson Badenoch, Jr., professor at UC Irvine Law Environmental Law Clinic, representing Azul, um, who just spoke. In the introductory presentation on the revised guidance, everything that Ms. Ducklow described about critical infrastructure describes desalination plants. These are large facilities that connect to systems that span multiple communities and so on. We genuinely can't identify a case where a major desal plant on the coast should not automatically be deemed critical. So why not make it automatic? Ms. Ducklow seemed to indicate that desal plants weren't included due to lack of staff or resources and time. But desal plants are meant to last 50 years. So these des decisions are generational, important, and must be prioritized. I oppose the revised guidance because it fails to include desalination plants as critical infrastructure, holding these facilities to the highest building standards for coastal infrastructure. Water is always critical. Any infrastructure for it should be deemed critical officially. Earthquakes and tsunamis are a reality and put desalination plants at risk if not built to appropriate standards. Climate change is leading to inevitable sea level rise, which puts all potential desal plants at risk if not built to appropriate standards. The commission has important climate change planning duties that are implicated directly here. Water must be held as a public service as part of the common trust, not sold off to for-profit corporations. It will drive rates up for rate payers while driving the quality down. Um, there are many better ways to get water and save water to solve our collective water needs. Desalination, unlike places like Saudi Arabia, which we are not, uh, should be seen as a last resort, not a first choice. Making desalination plants for-profit enterprises creates serious questions for the public trust. Another note is that the proposed Poseidon facility 
burns fossil fuels, resulting in what would what I would call is dirty water, uh, dirty to make and dirty to drink because it includes boron and heavy metals that are part of the process. To conclude, desalination plants, if they are to be built, must be automatically designated as critical infrastructure. Given the role that they intend to play, providing our communities with water and the inherent risks they face from extreme weather events and climate change, these facilities, if they are to be built, must be built to deal with all of those risks. The only reason a desal plant would push for anything less is very clear, to reduce building and development costs. And that is not acceptable. But then the risks fall to the citizenry, where a plant fails and people are no longer able to rely on their taps. If you want to promote resilient coastal policies, any desal plant should be categorized appropriately as critical infrastructure. So let's avoid bad outcomes by designating and designate deep desal plants exactly as they should be. Thank you for your time from my. Thank you. Next is Charming Evelyn. Charming, it is now your turn to speak. You may unmute yourself and begin. Hello, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, so I want to say, first of all, uh, my name is Charming Evelyn, and I am the co-chair for the Water Committee for Sierra Club, California, and also the chair for the Water Committee for the Angeles chapter, which covers Orange County and Los Angeles County. Thank you, commissioners and uh, Dr. Lester for your great presentation. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. From the Poseidon letter, the draft guidance document states throughout that it is intended for water infrastructure, but does not apply to seawater desalination facilities. The development and operation of which constitutes a coastal dependent use. Poseidon water concurs that seawater desalination facilities that supplement other drinking water supplies are not critical facilities for the purpose of flood hazard analysis and design. However, please consider a more fulsome explanation so stakeholders are properly informed as to why seawater desalination facilities are excluded from the draft guidance. We are here to say that it should be included in the draft guidance. And of course, Poseidon is looking to exploit what the Coastal Commission or the Commission has uh, with the draft guidance. Going back to Dr. Lister's presentation, sea level ride at tide lines pose a threat to water infrastructure. Yet the Commission has failed to include seawater desalination projects as critical water infrastructure. Let's take a look at two major tsunamis that have already occurred in the last 20 years. We are in California. We are not immune to earthquakes or tsunamis. This exclusion, if allowed to remain, would set a very dangerous precedent for the future. Sierra Club's desalination policy states that ocean desalination should be of the last resort once all other options have been exhausted. And this is due to ocean desal's harmful effects on the environment and marine life. Any efforts to ID them as non-critical gives a pass to private investors over the public, the environment, and creates a social justice issue because then the public pays financially, environmentally, and with their health and their lives. We all know these projects are heavily subsidized with taxpayers' dollars in the form of grants and bonds. Poseidon is due to come before the California Debt Allocation Com committee next year to ask for $1.1 billion in funding. Of course, that comes from the public pocket. While the guidance was not clearly intended to address power plants and pipelines, it is intended to address water infrastructure, of which the last time I checked, an ocean diesel plant supplies water. Therefore, it is critical water infrastructure. The staff report states that they don't have time or manpower to address ocean diesel plants. This is the most ridiculous thing I've heard, given that there are proposed plants in Huntington Beach, El Segundo, Dana Point, and Monterey. We request the following key modifications. Define seawater desalination facilities as critical water infrastructure, provide specific guidance on desalination facilities. The revised guidance should clarify that the absence of explicit it's detail terrible. on desalination facilities does it's not terrible. imply they are considered critical infrastructure. Thank you, I'm done. Thank you. 